Research and innovation in Futuris. More than 3 million people across the EU now work in eco-industries, producing nature-friendly goods and services. It's an increasingly competitive sector, buoyed by constant innovation. Let's see how scientists and manufacturers are joining forces to support this new green industrial revolution. Like in every big city, the air in London is increasingly polluted because of car fumes. One solution is to try and make all taxis emission-free by 2020. A small fleet of hydrogen-powered taxis is being tested as part of this European project. How does that work? These black cabs running on fuel cells rather than combustion engines are much cleaner and quieter. This vehicle drives entirely different to anything that I've driven before. It's much smoother and quieter and it's a pleasure to drive. Responsive, everything on it is electronic which means it's less work for me to do and after getting out of there after a few hours, it's like I've not been to work at all. A tank full of hydrogen gives the taxi up to 400 kilometers autonomy. The tests should give researchers a better idea of how to make the vehicles lighter and more efficient. There's an enormous amount that, that we learn. Uh, it, it, the vehicle integration, how the different components talk to each other within the, the powertrain and uh, how the vehicles operate. Different taxi drivers, different taxi uh, driving style, uh, different performance characteristics, and importantly, how they interface with hydrogen for refueling. Today, converting a car to hydrogen fuel increases its price five-fold, making it completely unaffordable. But at the current rate of research, it's hoped this technology should become more competitive in the next few years. There are standards that still need to be put in place for hydrogen and hydrogen vehicles. But, you know, again, part of projects like this it helps to address those, those issues. And, and, you know, when we, as we move towards commercialisation of, of these vehicles in, in 2015, um, the required regulations will, will be addressed and, and in place. With a growing demand for clean fuels, Governments and scientists need to get together to develop more efficient vehicles and better infrastructure. We are at the European Commission's Science Service, the Joint Research Centre based in Northern Italy. Here, researchers work with a wide range of eco-industries. In the JRC's Vehicle Emissions Laboratory, tests are being carried out on new equipment that reduces harmful engine exhausts. We look into different options, we assess these technologies and then we share our conclusions with the car making industry, setting the new standard of the future for these cars. But is hydrogen a cleaner alternative if it relies on fossil fuels for its production? Are electric cars running on batteries made of imported rare earth compounds sustainable? Scientists are looking not only at the final product, but at its carbon footprint. It is certainly true that on a local level, on an urban level, electric and hydrogen fuel vehicles are cleaner. But it's important to carry out research on the full energy footprint, not just on what happens inside the car. Laboratory analyses of combusting engine emissions can differ from real-life situations. This new mobile device, developed at the Joint Research Center, fits in a car trunk and works while the vehicle is on the road. The device is connected to the exhaust. The exhaust goes to the fume meter. This allows us to measure directly the exhaust flow and to extract a part of this flow which is then analyzed. Mobile tools like this are able to provide much more accurate measurements. For example, these tests show that in certain real-life conditions, cars produce two to four times more emissions than in a lab.
Let's now head to Germany for a look at another eco-industry undergoing major change, renewable electricity. This former military airbase near Brandenburg was recently transformed into Europe's largest photovoltaic plant. It produces enough energy for a medium-sized city, massively reducing CO2 emissions in the area. The Anlage produziert etwa 85 gigawatt. Annual production is 85 gigawatt hours, that's 22,500 households, or a city of around 90,000 people. Germany has about a thousand hours of sunlight a year. That's enough to make such installations profitable over their expected lifetime, which is around 30 years. There's been huge progress when it comes to efficiency and cost reduction over the last couple of years. It's now a sustainable option to replace fossil fuels with clean energy. Back at the Joint Research Center in Italy, scientists are busy studying solar panel performances. Researchers use sophisticated dark rooms and outdoor testing grounds. We're particularly interested in uh, the power output of the panel itself. So that is being able to uh, specify a value that the panel should produce under standard conditions of temperature and of uh, solar radiation. The photovoltaic sector is evolving fast and brings together a range of industries and technologies which must work together closely to produce results. The head of the JRC's Renewable Energies Unit is confident about the future. We are able to provide increasingly competitive alternatives to conventional energy sources, especially as new generations of researchers are coming up with fresh ideas, bringing together disciplines like bioengineering and chemistry. So I'm confident that they will help develop these new sources of energy. Boosting growth, creating new jobs and reducing greenhouse gases, if they're able to meet the economic challenge in this competitive sector, eco-industries could offer a sustainable alternative both for man and for the planet. <laughs>